Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Crypto Insider channel. I am the Crypto Insider, back with another cryptocurrency video for you. It is Sunday. I hope your weekend's going extremely well and everything's going just according to plan and that you're keeping an eye on the cryptocurrency market. I am not a registered tax advisor or a registered financial planner, uh, investment advisor, broker. I, I'm not a plumber. Um, none of that stuff. I am just uh, a, a guy that's worked in the fintech space for a long time. Uh, 17 years. I think it'll be 18 years once we get to November. Uh, so that's exciting. And I do work with Ripple Partners, so sometimes I might get a little bit of insight into what they're doing. Uh, full disclosure, I do not work in the global payments or remittances section of the uh, fintech industry. So that is handled by a completely different division within my company. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of Ripple Partners are our clients uh, and, and utilizing probably some of our offerings. We're probably competing with Ripple uh, on some level there. Uh, in any case, uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, what you're seeing on the screen before you. If you're new to the channel, and I cover this in just about every video, uh, when you click the links at the end of the video, you will see that I do cover this in every video. Uh, because uh, when we make every video, we send a donation to GoodXRP for every new subscriber. It's a little bit of XRP. It's just a donation to a charity group. What they do is they take it, they break it down amongst a lot of worthwhile charities. You can check them all out by checking out the hashtag or their uh, tags on the screen and see what they do. Clean water, St. Jude's, dog rescues, homeless vets, uh, tree planting, all kinds of good stuff. We love giving to them. It's kind of a win-win promotion. Uh, we, we donate to charity for everybody that clicks that subscribe button and they get a little bit of their mission done. So it's, it's a win-win. And uh, we, so far we've had pretty good success with that. Let's jump to the live cryptocurrency prices as uh, described by Live Coinwatch. I'm going to do that right now, but I always like to refresh in case something's happened. Um, Bitcoin uh, notably has broken that $10,000 mark, so very interesting. Uh, I'm sure that was a level of resistance. We'll see where it goes. It's dragging up other parts of the market, I think. Uh, dominance still about where it was yesterday. Not much of a change. I think it, it gained a little bit, like 0.11% or something, but on the whole, uh, not changed overnight. XRP is up 1.27% on the t day, but down 0.03 cents for the hour. We'll see how this goes. I was watching this last night, and we have a lot of trouble with that 29 cent mark. It seems like we're able to uh, beat 28 pretty easily. But when we get to that 29 cent mark, something happens because we've rejected from it twice now that I've noticed. So hopefully the bulls can uh, push past the resistance there. I'm, I'm positive we will at some point. I just don't know when. Hopefully it's uh, within the next day or two. Uh, BNB coin up. Uh, AD Cardano up. Uh, eh, just up a little bit. Uh, I think Tezos is the big story. Where did it go? Did I pass it up? Oh, yeah. Tezos is the big story. Up 13.28% for the past day. If you guys are into altcoins that are not XRP, I hope you managed to buy some Tezos at some point. If you did, you would you you'd have noticed a, a pretty nice return on them. It's been really hedging uh, some of the... Uh, Towards in last year, it really hedged against some of the um, downward price action from uh, XRP, sort of stabilized it for me. I also have some Link. Link has some positive. Uh, one of our, our favorite technical analysis people here at the Crypto Insider channel is DIY Investing, who's bullish on Link as well. So we do have a tiny bit of link, nothing, uh, you know, no great position that'll probably, that'll make me rich, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. 
But uh, we, tr we try to diversify a little bit. Our main love here at the Crypto Insider Compound is XRP. I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Just You're just going to have to bear with me. I mean, if this is the slow point that causes you to stop watching the video, I apologize. But hey, you know, we're not we're not a news agency here. It's not like I'm on CNN or anything. <laughs> uh, we're going to look a little more in depth at the XRP price action here. It looks like we may have bumped up in the past five minutes. We went over that uh, 28 cent mark again. We don't seem to have a lot of problem with 28, but it's this right here. It's this 28.9 or 28.7, or whatever it happens to be where our resistance level is, is lying. So we've got some of the moving averages turning green within the last five minutes. It, uh, at least we're, we're kind of neutral on the oscillators down here, the strength index and the Bollinger Bands. We'll see if if some of this green action turns it green. Um, we're, we're just waiting and hodling like everyone else. And uh, we've got some charts out there from Ludd, and I guess his chart, now looking at the post that came with this, is uh, is sort of tied to Mr. Level Up. And what he's showing here is probably this high 28 cents right here. He's got a comparison of the fractal in 2017 to now. And so We've got the pendant here, and I think what he's saying, and this is where we are right now, uh, what I think he's saying is that if history repeats, uh, we could we could end up on this big uh, uh, bullish engulfing uh, candles here. And it, I don't know if his price targets are accurate, but it shows us, I think, all the way up to a uh, dollar sixty or a dollar sixty-five or something. So interesting. I, you know, let's let me see. Yeah, I, I don't know where these stop, <laughs> but it looks like it's well over a dollar twenty. Something something like it. And he says, uh, of course, Chris, think we're on the same page. I think he's talking to Mr. Level Up. We are really close, amigo. No way around it. And then he has rocket ships. So I think he thinks we're going to rock it up to over $1.20. That's, that's great. I appreciate it when people uh, do these comparisons. Again, I'm not a, a technical analyst, so I just have to look at, at what they're doing. Uh what I'm worried about right now is how much of the price action of the recent bullish trends that we've seen are a result of actual fundamentals, use cases, utilities, or are they the result of fear? In other words, are they the result of things going wrong with Iran, which we'll talk about in the next story, or the coronavirus? Uh, because those spikes, while they tend to be nice, don't tend to be long-lived. For instance, you know, if there's a coronavirus vaccine or something, let's hope there is, uh, <laughs> uh, for the sake of humanity. Although, I don't think the coronavirus is, I mean, it's hard to trust information out of China. Like, if somebody has a bad heart and the coronavirus and they die, chances are the Chinese authorities are going to report it as heart problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of shady things that can happen in China, but uh, it, it's not as, I mean, there are a lot of coronaviruses that have been around for a long time, and I think the flu still kills way more Americans or way more people just every year than, uh, than the coronavirus does. Uh, so... We'll see what, where it goes, but what the, the point is, I'm getting off topic. The point is, those spikes from, from uncertainty and fear uh, tend to not be long-lived or well-supported. So we have, to, um, we have to hope that a good deal of the price action that we have seen is coming from the partnerships with like Intermex and Bitmex and Swaps and Utility with the ODL solution. That's where we want our price action to come from, in my opinion. Our last story here is Iran has a 
Bitcoin strategy to beat Donald Trump. As the United States expands its sanctions, Iran has been ramping up its use of cryptocurrencies to get around them. And this article is by Tanvi Ratnan. It's a bit older, uh, but I wanted to talk about it uh, because it sounds like a very bad thing, right? Iran is skirting sanctions with cryptocurrency. First of all, you got to understand, when these regimes... Oh, <laughs> When, when we put sanctions on them, they skirt them anyway. So they'll skirt them with fiat, they'll skirt them with gold, they'll skirt them with oil. The problem is they can only skirt them with a few other countries, maybe China, Russia, people that'll just kind of roll their eyes and do at our sanctions and do things on on the uh, on the slide aside anyways, and then just let us complain about it to the UN. In narrow terms, the economic sanctions imposed by the United States on Iran in the last two years have been effective, shrinking the Iranian economy by 10 to 20 percent. But they've also accelerated Iran's use of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, which are increasingly used by the Iranian government and public to evade legal barriers. This has led to an attempted crackdown on Bitcoin by international regulators, but the cryptocurrency industry is proving more nimble than the enforcers of the sanctions. Um, it says the Iranian government has had a long interest in using cryptocurrencies to support international trade outside of the traditional banking system. It, this article is pretty lengthy, and it goes on to talk about CBDCs. Um, and it says that they're going into Iran has legalized mining because they have cheap electric there. So what we see is for things for things that are. Um, proof of work uh, that, that require mining is the mining flees to the cheapest electricity which are usually not very not produced in a way that's very green and they're usually in these countries with these regimes so if you have 60 percent of your mining power in china you know to call yourself a decentralized coin when when the chinese authorities can just come in and shut you down at any second <laughs> uh is is kind of uh disingenuous in my opinion but we'll we'll see uh multiple obstacles still exist before iran can fully harness the power of cryptocurrencies uh, the room for anonymity is steadily shrinking for cryptocurrency transactions as formal identification of customers through KYC compliance rises globally. Um, uh, so, yeah, Bitcoin transactions are not anonymous, and I, I'm guessing that everybody listening to the channel knows that. So it looks like uh, we've added some addresses to the specially designated na nationals list. And according to forensic analysis by the Treasury Department, more than 7,000 Bitcoin transactions valuing millions of dollars have been processed by these addresses. Apart for, from other criminal activities such as the Silk Road, scams, cryptocurrency usage by regimes such as Venezuela, and Iran has been one of the driving factors for heavy regulation of the sector. And... The reason I'm covering this story is because sanctions overall do not work. And I think this could be a good thing. Uh, hear me out. <laughs> if these countries are getting around sanctions with cryptocurrencies or some other way to trans transmit value, it just means that diplomats... Uh, need to change their game and change the way they do things. Because the sanctions have never worked. The only thing they do is they squeeze the economy a little bit. Your average Iranian citizen will starve to death. But the Shah or Ahmadinejad or whoever, they're all going to live in the palace. They're still going to be in the palace. Uh, they're not going to suffer really any ill effects. The only people you're hurting is the citizens of the country most of the time. Uh, many of them who may be apolitical completely or not even understand why their economy sucks. So, uh, overall, I, they say, uh, the Trump administration loves to say that sanctions work, and they do, uh, to the point where that they've, according to this article, shrunk their economy by 10 to 20 percent. But at the end of the day, like I said, it hurts It hurts your average citizen more than it hurts the uh, the leaders. So I, I think the diplomats are going to have to take a 
a different approach where if you are a threat to national security, uh, w you know, we're, we're going to um, explore other options than sanctions. So if, you, <laughs> if, if cryptocurrencies take sanctions off the table, then it means that we will have to make a more determined effort on what is a national security threat. You know, if, if you're training terrorists or have terrorist camps that are supported by your government, we're not going to be able to say, well, we're going to put sanctions on you until you stop doing that behavior. We're going to have to take a position that says, well, we're going to come in and take out those terrorist <laughs> camps. Or, And, and uh, so it's it may make the wor world a little more of a military place, but it may also make the world a place where people put more thought into the garbage that they're they're doing uh, before they do it. So we'll see which way it goes. But I, I think sanctions are going to end up being a thing as the past, not because of Bitcoin. Like I said, Bitcoin is easily analyzed. There are companies that all they do is forensic analysis of Bitcoin of the Bitcoin uh, ledger, the transactions. They and you know if you're committing crimes on the Silk Road or buying stuff on the dark web, the the prosecutors, our federal prosecutors, love it if you're using Bitcoin because it is so easy to track you down, <laughs> and uh, they they will tell you that. So this idea that that you know Bitcoin is some a uh, great anonymous thing. No, there there are much better. Uh, cryptocurrencies for anonymity than than Bitcoin. All right, so we, what did we cover today? Trump, Iran. We have a price prediction somewhere over a dollar um, for from Ludd. Appreciate his technical analysis. Um, yeah, we pretty much covered everything today. So I'm going to pop up some videos for you to watch uh, and enjoy. Continue your crypto insider journey and uh, I will probably be back on with another video tomorrow after we see what the price is going to do today let's see if we can't break that 29 cent resistance